In this video, we're going to talk about the five different preview features that you should be using within your Power BI reports. We're going to look at some features that will give you some different options in how you visualize your data in your reports, as well as some quality of life features that you can use to improve the way that you develop your reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So preview features, as the name suggests, are features that are not typically available out of the box when you boot up Power BI Desktop by default. You'll need to enable them from the preview feature settings in Power BI Desktop, which is not too difficult. You'll find the preview features on under File, Options and Settings, and under Options, you will find this under Preview Features under Global. And from here, you will have a few different selections of preview features that you can enable by ticking the specific preview feature and then restarting Power BI Desktop. So typically, the features here are early releases of features that will become generally available in the future. So they might change as you know the different months uh, roll over, or they might be removed altogether. In my couple of years of experience using preview features, though, none of them have really been removed. Usually they have been changed or new features have been added to them as they go into general availability. And I never really encountered any reports breaking bugs. So whenever there's a new preview feature, feature that comes out from the monthly update. I typically try turning them on just to try them out and eventually just get used to them as time goes along. So today we're going to cover some of the more useful preview features that you should be using, starting from the on object interaction. So on object interaction is a different way that you can interact and format your charts and visuals in Power BI Desktop. So obviously the start of all of these preview settings is to enable them from those preview settings settings first. And to start with the on object interaction, you can just double click on any of the visuals and it will just give you this blue outline. You can deselect by just clicking outside of it, or you can right click on any of the visuals and click format. And that will just bring you in there. Now, on object interaction means formatting the objects that you select within these borders. So you want to maybe rename the title, just simply double click on it and just change the title here. You can you want to change the color of your lines, for example, you can just simply right click and then change the line colors here. The format pane is still there for the more advanced features and formatting options that you might want to use. But for the most part, things like building or adding new axes or adding new data wells or the basic formatting options will be on the object themselves. On object interaction is a more native way of customizing and formatting your charts and visuals in line with other Microsoft products. Like if you're creating charts in PowerPoint, for example, it works almost the same way or reporting services in SQL. It pretty much works like this. Turning on this preview feature changes the way that you work with the panes in Power BI Desktop, though, and in quite a significant way. And it, it took me a couple of days or even weeks to get used to it. However, as a lot of these preview features are, they usually will be generally available, which means that this will be the new default way that you will be formatting your visuals in the future. So it's better to get used to it now than later when it gets forced to you. I covered all aspects of the on object interaction as well as its limitations in a different video. So if you want to learn more about the other things that you can do with on object interaction, go check out that video. The next preview feature that you should be using is the field parameters, which lets your users control the dimensions and calculations that you are analyzing using slicers within your page. So for example, here we are showing the different sales by customer here in this bar chart. And you might have some requirements to see the sales, let's say by product category or by product themselves, or you want to see the percentages of those. Now, instead of creating multiple visuals to accommodate for this, you can simply create a field parameter that lets your users switch to those different views. So you might want to be able to see this by different categories or see this by different products or categories, or you might want to change the sales. Instead of seeing the value in sales, you want to see the percentage in total, which might be useful in some cases. 
So as I mentioned, this feature is super useful, especially when I'm creating self-service reports for users who are well-versed in interactive reports. This allows them to interact with their data that they've never done before without having to recreate a lot of the different pages that you normally would with these kinds of scenarios. The best thing about this feature is that it's super easy to implement. So you simply just turn on the preview feature, select the field parameter, add the categories that you want to have in your slicer. And once you hit the add button, it will create the slicers and the column for you. If you want to learn more about field parameters and some of the different ways that you can use field parameters for, like maybe showing the top 10 categories or top 10 products, I did cover it in a separate video. So go check that one out if you want to learn more. The next one is dynamic format strings, which is a feature that lets you conditionally change the format of your measures using DAX expressions. Here's a great use case of when you would want to use dynamic format strings, for example, where you have in the same measure different currencies and you want to visualize them. If you're visualizing them into line charts or bar charts, for example, you want to be able to show the right currency when they are being visualized. Now, the setup for this isn't too complicated. However, it takes a fair few steps, which I did cover already in a separate video. So this example is from that video. So if you want to learn how I did this, go check out that one. Another way that you can utilize dynamic format strings is by customizing the data labels of any of your visuals. So you can leverage kind of storytelling or even other values that you probably wouldn't think that you would be able to do with format strings. The next one on my list is the new card visual, which was released a few months ago. And this is basically an upgraded version of the default card visual in Power BI. So one of the main benefits of really using these new card visual is the ability to add multiple cards in the same visual. Being able to create multiple cards within the same visual does have its benefits. Like for example, in performance, this means that having less visuals within the page will make the page load a lot faster than having multiple card visuals. Formatting and styling can also be unified. So it means that when you're changing and making sure that all the properties of one card is used in another, you can make these property settings and apply it across all the different cards within this visual. Or you might want to do this individually, which this card visual lets you do so. Along with that, it gives you a lot of other new features that the card visual never allowed you to do. Like for example, adding icons, accent bars, or even shifting the titles and the callouts from being above or below the values is really handy, especially if you want to kind of adjust the look and feel of your cards altogether. I regularly use this visual for my reports that I do for work just because of how versatile and really flexible it is with the customization that it offers. The last on my list is this ability for you to save your Power BI reports as project files within your desktop. So this feature, so by default, Power BI, when you save this in your local machine, you will have the PBIX option. So instead of saving your file as a PBIX file in your local machine, you can instead choose to save your file as a projects file, a .pbip file. This creates two different folders, which separates your data sets and your reports. All of the files that are within these folders make up your projects file, and they are in a JSON text formatted file. There's a lot of benefits with making these readable. One is that you can make updates to your model, your properties by just changing those text files. Another good thing about these being readable files is that you can use source control systems like GitHub, for example, to version your reports, which normally wouldn't be available with the PBIX files, which makes it easier for you to collaborate with other developers and have a sort of life cycle similar to a typical software development one. However, in the past, when it was released a few months ago, it had a limitation in that you couldn't publish project files directly into the service. You needed to convert it into a PBIX file and then publish it, which as of September of this year, I haven't really experienced that anymore. It seems that you can publish now as a Power BI projects file. So you don't really have any other reasons to be saving your files as a PBIX file, and you should be using this Power BI projects file instead. 
And that's really it for this video. I hope that's encouraged you into looking at these preview features and see what you can use to improve the look and feel of your reports or improve the way that you work and develop your reports altogether. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I need to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.